the purpose of today's session is is largely to to you know start discussing some of the key topics um, around well-being and, uh, and and business in in the workforce. So my name is Simon Scott Nelson. I'm CEO, lucky enough to be CEO of Wellity Global, which is a um, global solution for workplace well-being. Um, and we have one main aim, which is to normalise the conversation around mental health to make everyone become the best versions of themselves. It's easy, isn't it? Um, it's easy when you say it like that. It's a huge collaborative effort. Um, it stemmed from my own issues with my mental health a few years ago, um, which went into decline. I just know that um, the fear factor of uh, when, when your own mental health is in decline, especially in the workplace, is something that I never want to happen to anyone else. Um, so joining with as many people as we can to collaborate and um, and do as much as we can in terms of well-being. Um, two things, what is well-being in, in the definition of better workplace, but what, more importantly is hybrid work. You know, I think only when we can get the definition of hybrid work we discuss whether it's a, a really good thing. Just just from what I'm seeing with my ear to the ground and, and what they're asking us to do for them and their and their staff is they're just they're not quite sure how to navigate it. So they know that there's been lots of benefits to home working, they've saved money on office space, some of them have completely closed their offices down, obviously looking at COVID um, sort of safety precautionary measures as well. And so I think from both sides there's been positives and possibly negatives. For some it's been a complete whirlwind because they weren't really offering much in terms of flexible working options to their staff pre-COVID and now all of a sudden they, they've learned a huge amount and they're like actually this has benefits, this can work. So there's lots of things isn't there to, to consider and I think it's going to you know, depend on the company, the business the sector, the staffing group that they have, the work that they're doing. So yes, it's a, it's a big huge topic. Yeah and you mentioned different industries as well because they are all very different. Some are perhaps more required to be in the field or, or we thought they were before. If you look at the entire sales industry now we're looking at what it is to be a salesperson because that gregacious character that we all opted into years ago. Do we go back? Do we all start racing out? Do salespeople start racing out again? I think everything just needs to be justified more now. Is that Would that be right? I think from, from my perspective, the uh, everything in, in, in business has been a one-size-fits-all traditionally. If you think about working prior to the pandemic, it was you know, everyone comes into the office, like, there was no excuses, you know, you're there at your desk by nine, you've got your hour yeah. it's very rigid, and then suddenly people have realised that life has started to um, step in, and, and, and I think there is no one-size-fits-all, because I think from working from home perspective, a young professional, 21, starting out, would absolutely love being surrounded by people in an office, in a vibrant city, going out and having a few beers after work and, and sharing knowledge, whereas someone with young children having the opportunity during the pandemic to see their kids grow up, spend that quality time, take them to school is amazing. Whereas then if you go further again and you've got a senior manager who has to manage um, a team of people remotely, but also manage their two 10 year old children who are being homeschooled, then suddenly you've got different effects of well-being through all the different models. And I, I think it's an incredibly tricky space for individuals and companies to have to navigate and say, well, right, there's a one-size-fits-all, you're all back to the office because that's going to upset and affect over half of their staff. And if you say, well, okay, we're going to stay at home from now on forever, then a lot of people will leave. And I think a lot of the fears that companies have is, is, is attracting and retaining talent. I used to work in the, in the sales industry and still, in, in, a, in a sense, do. Um, and not having people around you is incredibly um, demotivating when, for, for me personally when it comes to looking to your left and right someone's just shouting you down the phone or you know you've got the wrong person to speak to or you've made a mistake and you're on your own sitting there what have you got you've got the tv maybe the dog um, to say hello to but i just think to the to my point is, is is that we've got to create and listen to as many people and make and that's what hybrid working is for me it's, it's understanding what gets the best out of each section of your teams sorry for i agree that. with that <laughs> Lucy, at the size of your organisation, I know we spoke a bit more, where do you start with this? What Charlie said, not one cat fits all. Well, you know, one size fits all has never been in the in our mantra. And we, we have about 37,000 employees. Just, it's really, um, really difficult. So we've never really had a one size fits all because quite frankly, the nine to five is really sexist. So it doesn't really um, doesn't really fit with half our demographic, who are who are women, um, and um, 
So what we've done over the pandemic is people that have needed to go into the office for their own mental health because they, they, they don't they, they may be in a studio working on their bed with a laptop not good for their mental health. If they, if they have, have suffered with their mental health, then they're allowed to come into the office. So we have a desk booking system. So all through the pandemic, we've got people in the office. And we've said to people, what do you want to do? What would make you happier? What would make you feel more secure? And people have been working from home. People have been coming in two days a week. So all through the pandemic, people have been coming in. We're, we're not saying, okay, you everyone has to come in from the 19th of June. July, everyone in the office, kind of come in half the time. But if you want to come in all the time, that's also fine. But if you work in London and you're receiving your, a London salary, because bearing in mind this is taxpayers' money as well, well, then you have the option to change your terms and conditions and become a home worker. But we would like to see you in the office at least two and a half days a week. The people who live alone have felt very alone, very, very alone. And actually pulling people back in um, just into the into the work family and having a, a picnic outside with your team has been really useful. So I think the hybrid working model is is kind of is kind of what we've always been doing. We've just given it a name now. Some organisations have been very rigid. You know, it is, has been the nine to five. You can't knock off early. You can't go to an appointment. You have to work your time back. And then some, you know, take Fridays from home, leave early if you need to, be a bit more relaxed. Um, so I wonder if there's going to be a a difference in those organisations that were working more flexibly before, you know, that is a priority to have that listening to the staff and, and to having that well-being at the forefront. What we're not really listening, we're not listening to people. So um, from, the, from the permanent secretary who, who said we're going to adopt a hybrid working model, so essentially give it a name and uh, we're all going to work to this. It's not really consultation, there was no consultation with the staff around that it's just it was it's just morphed into it it's it's just evolved into this civil servants are very gradist because that's all they have is their is their grade so usually you'd have to be like a middle management grade to take a laptop a government laptop and work from home and now uh, they've, they've given the laptop to the junior grades who have been working from home and they've been doing it brilliantly so um, that's changed that trust thing is a huge thing with working from home and have you found any sort of issues or anything because we're quite a smaller studio so it's been pretty okay for us because we we know all of our staff and we know them all sort of by name and sort of talk to them every day pretty much so the trust thing we just know like yes they're going to go and get on with this and it's completely fine um have you found any sort of issues with that with it being a bit of a bigger sort of team well i had some quite a lot of comms from from people about the blooming light on the uh, teams and the skype you know the, the the green light being on you know and when it goes i don't know because i don't i always turn mine off but sure. um when it's on if you're not active then it goes to yellow or something and and they're desperately you know pressing it to keep their their light on so their line manager sees that they're working and we've and it's and it's a bit of kind of you know like sort of stalking, uh, Skype stalking. We've been calling it, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, people's lights are on. on. So we, we we did quite a lot of comms around that. Stop it, stop it, because it's actually moving into a bullying kind of environment there, sort of cyber stalking, bullying environment. We kind of just assumed that everyone was busy doing other things, and that's why they weren't on Teams. Um, I guess it kind of accentuates the culture that was already there before, doesn't it? If it was a pretty bad, toxic culture, it may have actually just accentuated it yeah. because the spotlight was on yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. a good culture you can trust that's the thing and um, a really nice thing that i noticed working my boss bob um he actually kind of encouraged us even during work times just to go away from the computer like even if it wasn't a break time he was like look you're at home all day you haven't spoken to anyone else you should just go and stand in the garden or go take the dog for a walk and i was like oh i will at dinner time and he was like no just do it now just get away from your desk because like it is that very rigid structure of oh I can't do anything until my hour dinner break and then I have to come back and just be at the desk all the time um, so that was a really nice thing because obviously I've worked other places where that would never be allowed it would be like well no go here do this what, um, sort of say what you've done at every minute of the day it really helped people to know that they had that freedom even if they didn't yeah. take it it was just a nice thing so the whole stigma of 
oh, you're working from home, you're not productive, you're not going to do great, or you're working from home and you are productive um, and you can continue to do it. That's kind of flipped the whole thing on its head because it's really about what is our belief on well-being? How do we care for people who, if, believe it or not, a third of the workforce has a condition, um, which is a true stat in this country, how are we dealing with those people? Because they're going to have on and off days all the time. What what has happened? What in terms of the isolation and aggression? What are the negative things that people might not be able to put their hands up? Certainly in a work environment. Tell everyone. Yeah. So I've been listening to everyone, and I think it's it's really interesting because I'm doing my master's research at the moment on working from home and the effects on people's psychological well-being and work-life balance. And what I'm starting to see like throughout the literature and through sort of industry trends is that there's this balance between some people really like it for the flexibility and sort of having that choice over when they want to work, where they want to work and balancing it with kind of life. And then there's the other side of it is that actually it is quite isolating for some people living on their own or um, young people who might be new to the job, kind of not having that connection with people is is really difficult and, and that's the main thing that's come through is that it is the isolation and sort of the disconnect from the organisation and not quite feeling supported enough and, and that kind of thing and, and as a result it's sort of impacted productivity and, and people's concentration and, and engagement and, and people not feeling like fully involved with what's going on in the organisation. Some people are struggling with the blurred boundaries, so um, not switching off at the right time. You know, if your if your desk's always open, you know, you can just go check your email at like 9 p.m. You know, you might have something you remembered you've forgotten to do, and that's another thing that's a lot of people have really struggled with is that you kind of don't have the separate space. So I've been um, studying from home and I've started Wellity completely from home. I've never met Simon, it's completely bizarre. Like we've met hundreds of times through Zoom but and I feel like I know him, but I've never met him in person and it's so strange. What we're realising now and I think from the hybrid nature of working at home is you can do a lot of your work in a lot shorter amount of time and then focus on things that you want to prioritise in your life. But as with the light on, the office and the company is seeing you as, oh, they're not doing anything, they've not logged on for two hours, but if you've completed all of your tasks for the day and done a bit of extra, why wouldn't you go off and then do the, go and look after yourself? And this is the light on trust situation. It all comes down for me to, to communication. Companies have got to look at their retention statistics. Like it's, it's, you can't get someone in for six months on an internship, completely fleece them so they've got mental health issues and they leave and they're damaged in that, in that industry and they don't want to work in it anymore. I experienced it in recruitment and that's what led to me. I had three or four panic attacks a day and I hid away in the company toilets and I was one of their best billers. I brought them in a quarter of a million pounds a year and they lost that and then they lost five other people who had similar statistics and now they've had to shut down the office in the city centre of Edinburgh. So you can see if we can articulate that actually looking after people is going to make your business succeed and thrive during this tough, tip, uh, tough period, then we'll be doing our job, I think. As we're growing, I think we do have to learn from the bigger companies, like you were saying, because, I mean, we underwent a growth phase and as a result, because obviously as it gets, uh, as the studio gets bigger, we might not be able to sort of give that personalized touch quite as much. Um, so we've kind of been looking into restructuring our benefit system and trying to like bring in sort of mental health well-being and um, incorporating that uh, and just anything we can do to sort of even though we won't be able to just maybe take people to the side as we do at the minute and just check they're doing okay if we do get bigger there's still something there and there's still some kind of place that they can go to and they don't feel like oh the company's just grown and now they don't care about me kind of thing the only silver lining is that people have realised that mental health is as big and important as physical health um, and so we need to support more people and, and I think individuals are now much more open to it, it's now about action and you're seeing it even in society nowadays, in the wider society, you think there's no hangover to COVID and we're all going to go back to normal. Mm -hmm. We're going through a time where people have been cooped up for a year and a half and things are only going to get worse unless we get things in place. Um, everyone's accepted it. As far as I know, it's okay. If you want to wear a mask in a meeting, that's fine. If you don't, then don't. But if you do, that's okay. But it's everybody's individual choice. So they're not going to be pushing that kind of, you know, social distancing, mask wearing 
but if somebody asks you to put a mask on just please put one on and um and it seems to be that people seem okay about that you know that's fine in and and that respectfulness knowing the, what other people around you want and respecting that and even if it's not what you want you know just kind of accepting that that's how it is now yeah. I mean okay. I have like, painted a picture of Pollyanna but it's not always like that but um, I'm hoping that that kind of goodness and that respectfulness will um, will push aside the, the more sort of negative behaviours I don't anticipate people fighting each other to get in the lift <laughs> 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 Thank <laughs> you.